بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما أخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمنا بنور الفهم وأنم علينا يا عظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أما بعد All praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and peace be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I testify that there is no God except Allah Almighty and I testify that Muhammad is the Prophet and the Messenger of Allah and I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us from amongst those who listen and hear and act upon what they listen and hear and to make us from amongst those that the way he gathered us here tonight to gather us with his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the after. Brothers and sisters, Death and the hereafter series. A series that I began asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it sincere for his sake. And I benefit to every brother and sister who attends and listens to it. And not only that, but it's not just about education, it's about awareness and implementation. It's about us being aware about the reality of all realities and also acting upon the reality, that reality that we need to prepare ourselves for. A reality that's been neglected. A reality that's been forgotten. And it is a reality that no one can run away from. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ Where are you going to escape to? Where are you going to run to? Allah says, فَفِرُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ Run to Allah. Escape to Allah. Go back to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. And Allah azza wa jal is the most forgiving. My brothers and my sisters in Islam, we've spoken about the different stages of death and the process of death. And then we start to talk about different aspects relating to death and the angel of death. And we spoke about how the angel of death appeared to Ibrahim alayhi salam in that form that he comes to the righteous servants and how happy Ibrahim to see him in that form. And how he comes to the wicked servants of Allah azza wa jal and the scary, terrifying and horrific form that made Ibrahim alayhi salam go unconscious. We spoke about how the angel of death takes the soul of the believer and the soul of the disbeliever. And how they look after it, the angel of death and his soldiers look after the soul of the believer coming out of the most beautiful fragrance and being called with the most beautiful names. And we spoke about the disbeliever and the wicked soul, how it's neglected and how it's put down with its rotten, disgusting smell. And this is the honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors the believer. And the dishonor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will dishonor the disbeliever. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he describes the believer as the one that his heart is connected to the akhirah and his heart is not connected to this dunya. While the disbeliever is the one that's so connected and concerned over this dunya and very far away from the akhirah. Because the believer is not created for this dunya. The believer is only a trespass, the believer is only a transit in this dunya. The believer is only a transit in this dunya to go to the hereafter. So he's not created for this dunya, he's created for a greater cause and a greater place and that's the paradise, that's the hereafter. But some people neglect their great cause and grab onto something more humiliating and less noble and that's this dunya. And the dunya is called dunya because it derives from the word dani and the word dani means something disgraceful, 
So the word dunya means to a disgraceful world in comparison to the hereafter. It is a very, very low world when you compare it with the hereafter. And we came to talking about the different punishments that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish His servants in the grave. And it all comes after the questioning. The questioning of who? The questioning of Munkar and Nakir. Munkar and Nakir are two angels that Allah Azza wa Jal created. Their job and task is to ask the dead. To ask them three questions. What are those three questions? Man Rabbuk, who is your Lord? Wa ma dinuk, what's your religion? Wa man nabiyuk, and who's your prophet? Or, wa ma da taqul, fil rajul ladhi bu'itha ilaykum aw fikum? And what do you say about that man that was sent amongst you? Three questions. They don't ask you about anything else. They're not going to ask you how rich you are, how knowledgeable you are, how prestigious you are, how powerful and influential you are, how hectic you are. They're going to ask you about who's your Lord, what's your religion, who's your prophet. These are the three questions that I should prepare myself for. I should be preparing myself for. If we answer them correctly, then it's the beginning of success. Success of what? Success to the hereafter. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, that death is the beginning of the day of judgment. Death is the beginning of the day of judgment. The beginning of the punishment or the beginning of the rejoice and enjoyful life in the paradise. So if you succeed in the grave, then you succeed in the paradise or for the paradise and the hereafter. You fail in the grave, then you fail in the hereafter and you enter the hellfire. And that's why Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu used to cry when death used to be mentioned in front of him more than when hellfire used to be mentioned in front of him. Why? He said because it's all about that beginning. If you succeed at that beginning, then you succeed later on. You fail at that beginning, you fail later on. That's why my brothers and my sisters, we need to prepare for that moment. That moment that every single one of us will face and every single one of us will experience. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that when someone is buried in the grave, two angels will come to him. He says, alayhi salatu wa salam, aswadani azraqan, black and blue. Black and blue. So they look very black and very blue. Very scary. Very terrifying. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, one of them, their name, one of them, his name is Munkar. The other one's name is Nakir. Munkar and Nakir, two angels. Black and blue. Black and blue. Very scary. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says. They'll come to the one who is dead in the grave and they say to him, Man Rabbuk, who's your Lord? Then, his reply will be, if he's a believer, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. My Lord is Allah. And I testify that there's no God except Allah. And then they say to him, and what's your religion? Wa ma dinuk? He says, Islam. And then they ask him, and what do you say about that man that was sent amongst you? He says, Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I say about him what Allah said about him in the Quran Allahu Akbar So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says When this righteous believer responds and replies back with those correct and accurate answers My Lord is Allah Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah My religion is Islam And my prophet is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The angels will reply back to him and say to him By Allah we knew you used to say that we know who you are. We know who you are. But this is the test. This is the test. Then the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, he says, then Allah azza wa jal will widen his grave so wide as far as it, as it could see. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will widen his grave as far as it, as it could see. Another hadith, 70 arms length. Very wide. Then, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enlighten his grave. It's a dark area. We're talking about underground. So dark. So scary. So tight. So Allah azza wa jal will widen his grave as far as you could see. And Allah azza wa jal will enlighten his grave so his grave becomes from darkness to nur, to light. To whom? To the believer. Then, when he sees, when he sees all this greatness, all this grace, all these things are given to him by Allah Azza wa Jal, respect by Munkar and Nakir, success by answering the question. The grave became so widened and so wide as far as you could see. And Allah Azza wa Jal will enlighten that dark room that he's in. He says, can I go back to my family and tell them? Let me go back to my family who are crying and weeping over my death and to say to them, don't cry, don't weep. I am in goodness and happiness. I am a lot more better, happier in the grave than I was above the grave. But then they'll say to him, no, sleep. Sleep. How a bride or a bridegroom sleeps at his or her first night. And no one will wake him up the next morning except the most beloved one to them. Sleep. Like a newlywed. Like a newlywed. He or, sleeps, he or she sleeps that night. No one will wake you up except those who you love. So he'll sleep until that time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands for the day of resurrection. But. But. If it. A wicked soul, if he's a disbeliever, munafiq, disobedient to Allah, distant away from Allah, lived in this light world with darkness. There's light, but there's darkness inside. They will ask him and say to him, Who is your Lord? So he says, La Adri, I don't know. I don't know. What's your religion? I don't know. What do you say about that man that was sent to you? Who is he? And I don't know anything about him. A hammer will come. They'll hit him with it. It will make him go down 70 miles in the ground. This is no theories. No talks from me. This is what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informs us. The wicked, believe, the wicked soul, the disbeliever, the disobedient... Those who did not have time to pray or fast. Those who did not care about committing the haram. Those who did not care about practicing the haram. Those who did not care about Allah is watching them. The angels, Munkar and Nakir will say, Who's your Lord? He says, I don't know. What's your religion? I don't know. What do you say about that man that was sent to you? I don't know. So they say to him, let you never know. Let you never know. Let you never know. So he'll be hit and struck with a hammer that makes him go down so deep, 70 miles in the ground. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command the ground to squeeze him and clash him so tight that will let his ribs enter one another. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, and he'll continue to be punished. He'll continue to be punished to the day of resurrection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to punish him to the day of resurrection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, النار يعرضون عليها غدوا وعشيا ويوم تقوم الساعة أدخلوا آل فرعون أشد العذاب the fire they are exposed to every morning and night which fire is Allah referring to the fire in the grave then Allah عز وجل says and on the day of judgment let the people of فرعون and فرعون enter the hell fire They'll be exposed to the hellfire every day and night. 
Every morning and evening, which fire Allah is referring to? The grave. And then let them enter the bigger fire in the hereafter. You succeed then, you succeed later on. You fail then, you fail later on. Who's your Lord? I don't know. Too busy. Too busy. Too busy in this world. Too busy disobeying Allah. Too busy watching TV. Too busy gathering money. Too busy worried about my fame. Too busy about myself. Too busy about my prestige. Who's your Lord? I don't know. What's your religion? I don't know. Who's your prophet? I don't know. La darait, wala talait, shall you never know. And he'll be striked with a hammer that makes him go 70 meters, 70 miles in the ground. 70 miles in the ground. A distance that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions. And then he'll continue to be punished to the day of judgment. While the other believer, let me go to my family that are crying on me now and weeping over my death to inform them. Don't cry. Don't weep. Be happy for me. By Allah, I'm more happier for what Allah had given me under the ground than what he had given me over the ground. My brothers and my sisters, the punishment of the grave is not a thought or a notion that we talk about and we think of someone else. It is something that I should think about myself and what I will be facing and whom. Whom am I with? Am I with those who say, my Lord is Allah, my religion is Islam and Muhammad is my prophet and messenger? Or am I going to be from amongst those who say, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I was too busy to know. I was too busy to learn. I was too busy to practice. Wal'iyadhu billah. The punishment of the grave is part of our aqeedah and something that we must believe in. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions different punishments to different sins. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentions to us different punishments to different deeds and sins. Number one, number one sin, an evil doing, and severe punishment is to kufr. Disbelieve in Allah. Disbelieve in Allah Azza wa Jal. Is number one sin with number one punishment. Disbelieving in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bih wa yaghfiru ma duna thalika liman yasha. Allah forgives for every sin except disbelieving in Allah. Disbelieving in Allah is the worst thing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah azza wa jal will continue to punish those who disbelieved in Allah, disbelieved in Him, in the grave and the hereafter. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered a farm in Medina, riding his camel. So his camel was about to tumble down, was about to start to shake and start to tumble down. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, does anyone know that there's a grave here? There's a grave of grave of few people. So the owner of the farm said, Yes, O Messenger of Allah, there's six or seven graves here. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, And when did they die? So he said to him, O Messenger of Allah, they died. When did they die? He said, O Messenger of Allah, they died during the days of kufr, during the days of disbelief. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test this ummah in their graves. And if it wasn't for the rahmah and the mercy of Allah upon you, and that you bury your dead, I would have asked Allah Azza wa Jal to let you hear the punishment of those who are punished and getting punished in their graves. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam indicates that his animal felt the severe punishment of those in the grave. That's why it was about to tumble and fall down. The disbelievers get punished in their grave. 
And the previous verse that I recited to you about Fir'aun and his people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, عَشِيَّ The hellfire that are exposed to her every morning and evening. 24 hours. 24 hours being exposed to the hellfire to the day of judgment. And then when the day of judgment comes, more severe and stronger fire for the disbelievers. <coughs> and from amongst the disbelief is hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is the worst of disbelief. And the scholars say the munafiq is worse than the kafir, even though he is a kafir. But the kafir is the one that tells you I'm a kafir and he is a kafir from inside. But the munafiq is the one that conceals his kufr and shows you Islam to plan and plot against Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَمِمَّنْ حَوْلَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَعْرَابِ مُنَافِقُونَ وَمِنْ أَهْلِ الْمَدِينَةِ مَرَدُوا عَلَى النِّفَاقِ لَا تَعْلَمُهُمْ نَحْنُ نَعْلَمُهُمْ from amongst the Bedouins and the Arabs, they are hypocrites. Even in Medina, they are hypocrites. Allah says, we know the hypocrites. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, سَنُعَذِّبُهُمْ مَرَّتَيْنِ سَنُعَذِّبُهُمْ مَرَّتَيْنِ ثُمَّ يُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَذَابٍ عَظِيمٍ Those hypocrites, we shall punish them twice. We shall punish them twice. Once in their grave and the other in the hellfire. سَنُعَذِّبُهُمْ مَرَّتَيْنِ Allah Azza says, we should punish the hypocrites, the munafiq. We should punish them twice. Once in their grave and the other in the hellfire. Then they should be taken to a severe punishment in the hellfire. What I just mentioned is regarding the disbeliever. And as they say, There is no sin after disbelief. The worst of sins is disbelief. But what I'm going about to mention are the sins that common Muslims commit that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned punishment to. <coughs> what I'm about to mention are common sins that maybe some of us had committed today or in the past. These are the punishment for them except to those who Allah Azza wa Jal will forgive and accept their repentance. Amongst those sins, not cleaning yourself and purifying yourself after you go to the toilet. Adam al tanazzuh min al bawl. Not cleaning yourself or purifying yourself after you go to the toilet. You don't just go to the toilet and walk out the way you walked in. You must clean yourself because Islam is about tahara. And it's not just about you. If you don't clean yourself, how do you expect to pray and expect your prayer to be expect, accepted? You need to be clean. You need to be pure. Where is that cleanliness in your life? And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, that cleanliness, purification, is part of iman. It's part of our deen. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when passed, when passed a graveyard, and there were two graves next to each other, so Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stopped there. And he says, see those two? They are getting punished. They are getting punished. Which tells us in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to hear the punishment of those in the grave. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says, they are getting punished. And they're not getting punished for something major. Something little that we see little in our eyes. They are getting punished. Not for something major. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is punishing them. One of them, in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, never used to purify and clean himself after going to the toilet. One of them, never used to clean himself or wash himself after he used to go to the toilet. The other, which is the other type of punishment, in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, and the other one used to be a namam. Yamshi bin Namima used to go and talk and gossip and lie over people and just spread wrong news and wrong gossips. Chat to this person and chat to that person. Lie about him or her and lie about him and her and go to this person and say, This person did this when he didn't do it. And this person said this about you when they didn't say it. Just go gossip and lie. 
and chat and falsely lie. Go from this person to that person. It's not haram to talk and socialize. It's haram what you say when you talk and you socialize. It's haram that you lie, particularly on someone else. You go to him and say, you know, your other brother said this about you. And he didn't say it. Just to cause fitna. <clears throat> Fabricate. Lie over one another. Namima. This is Namima. Another punishment, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in another hadith, when he went past a grave, and Nabi alayhi wa sallam said, he is getting punished. Not for something major. For ghiba. Backbiting and slandering. What's backbiting and slandering? That you go and say something, even if it's true, about someone that someone dislikes. I told you something not to say it to someone else. And you know that you don't like me, or you don't like, or you know that I don't like, for you to go and say it to someone else. But you won't. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, what's ghiba or messenger of Allah? He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, dhikruka akhaka ma yakra. For you to mention something about your brother that your brother dislikes. Even if it's true. You know me, I don't like you saying that to someone else. Why are you going to say it for? Where is the akhuwa? Where is the respect? Where is the brotherhood? Where is the rahmah and mercy between us? Namima and ghiba. Backbiting and slandering and false accusations. Wallahi, we're going to regret. We're going to regret over every word we uttered with if it wasn't in the right place. We're going to regret talking about him and talking about her, thinking, wallahi, it's enjoyable, thinking, wallahi, it brings happiness to us. But then, in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, they are punished and they are not punished for something severe. They are not punished for something major. One of them never used to purify himself. The other one used to be a namam and the other one used to be the one that used to bring or used to do ghiba. Backbiting, slandering. Then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took a branch of a tree, cut it into half, and he put it on each grave and he said, maybe Allah azza wa jal will ease on them the punishment because of this creation of Allah that remembers Allah. The branch of a leaf, a leaf of a tree, remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned punishment for al-ghulul. What's Al-Ghulul? Al-Ghulul is when the Muslim army goes and fights against their enemies and then they win the war against them. One of the Muslim soldiers will take a property from the disbelievers or the enemies and he would not disclose the information that he took this. He hides it. He steals it. Al-Ghulul is another type of theft. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he went to Khaybar, Amongst the soldiers, amongst the companions who had participated with him, after they finished from Khaybar, he was killed by a spear and arrow that attacked him. So the companion said, glad tidings to this person for the shahada, for being a martyr. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no. No. Don't say glad tidings to him. Don't be too happy for him. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, by the one that my soul in his hands what he stole while he was fighting in Khaybar and he did not disclose it and tell us about it, it continues to punish him to the day of judgment. What did he do? He took a property, did not disclose it. When his job has been entrusted to anything he takes, he brings back and he says, I got this. Theft, it's a type of theft. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, don't say glad tidings to him, martyrdom. By the one in which my son in his hands, what he took illegally, it continues to punish him in the grave to the day of judgment. And this is someone who died on a battlefield. But he done something wrong. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish him for that. Also, from amongst the sins and bad actions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish his servants in the grave are two. One of them, Praying the prayer without tahara. Praying the salah without wudu or without purification. And the other one is that you go past an oppressed person or you knew of an oppressed person and you had the ability to support them and you did not. 
You had the ability to support an oppressed person, but you did not. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, one of the servants of Allah in the grave, he is lashed every single day, hundred lashes. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts to minimize the number of lashes. Until it becomes one, then he says, what am I being lashed for? So they reply back to him and say, you prayed a prayer without purification and you went past an oppressed person and you didn't support him. We had the ability to support, but we didn't. I saw a brother or a sister, or I heard of a brother or a sister being oppressed. And I had the ability to do something, even to give a dollar. But I became too tight and selfish. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish. And Allah will punish in the grave before the hereafter. Also, in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us about a particular sin. That Allah will punish a particular punishment in the grave. Pride. Pride and show off. Pride and show off. To have pride over the creation of Allah. What's pride? That you think you're better than everyone else. You think you're above everyone. You are the untouchable. You are the one. No one is near you. You walk with pride. You speak with pride. You always have this show off. That you are better than everyone else. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, There was a man. There was a man wearing his garment. Walking with this garment with pride and show off. A man wearing his garment and walking with that garment with pride and show off. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala split the ground from beneath him and the ground swallowed him. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, he will continue to be punished to the day of judgment. Pride. Show off. You think you're better than everyone else. Pride and show off. You think you're above everyone else. Pride and show off. You think you're more superior than everyone else. Well, Iyadu Billah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished this man, made the ground swallow him, and the ground continues to punish him to the day of judgment. Pride, Well, Iyadu Billah. The believer does not have pride. The believer does not backbite. The believer does not slander. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says. Also, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks about lying. To lie. When you speak, you lie. When you talk, you lie. When you preach, you lie. Lying. Saying the false information. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish the one that says a lie in the grave before the hereafter. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa speaks about an event that took place where Angel Jibreel, another angel came and took him and showed him around particular things in his dream. In his dream sallallahu alayhi wa saw particular punishments. And prophets and messengers only see truth. They don't see foolish dreams. They only see truth and truthful dreams. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, I was taken to see different punishments of people in the grave. So he says, alayhi salatu was salam, I went past a man leaning on his back and neck. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, and hooks, hooks are entering his cheeks and his nose coming out of his back. And then he's turned around. And again from his back and neck, hooks are entering, coming from his face and nose and cheeks. And then he'll be turned around again. And then you find the part that was already hooks entered it. It's been healed for another punishment. And Allah Azza wa Jal continues to punish him like that to the day of judgment. Hooks entering his face to his back, his backside. And then when he's turned around, hooks entering his backside to the front. And then when he's turned around again, the hooks that had already entered the front face or his face had already healed for him to face and experience and taste the punishment again. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Subhanallah! Subhanallah, glory be to Allah Azza wa Jal. Who is this person 
So they replied back to him and they said, he is the one that leaves his house and lies a lie that reaches the horizon. Lies! Lies. Lies in his business, in his transaction, with his people, with his mates, with his peers, with his friends. Lies! Lies for a reason, for no reason, to make money, to look good, to show off. Lies! Does not even think about the word that he just lied. Hooks will enter his face from his cheeks and mouth and mouth and nose. Enter his back head. Then he'll be turned around and hooks will enter from his back head coming into his nose and mouth and cheeks. Then he'll be turned around again. And the hooks that had already entered his face already healed for him to face and experience and taste the punishment again and again and again and again and again, again to the day of judgment. Why? Liar. He lies a lot. Never speaks the truth. He lies. You've got some people that lie because they want to make money. Others lie just to look good. Others lie just to look good. Lying. Then the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was taken to see other people with other punishments. So the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, I saw a man. I saw a man sleeping on his back and another one standing above his head with a massive rock cracking it on his head. A man leaning on his back. Leaning on his back. Another man standing above him with a massive rock casting it and striking it and crashing it on his head. Then the rock falls. So this man that cracked it on his head will go and get that rock to come back and find the head of this man that he cracked it on had healed again. So he cracks him again, hits him with that rock again. So the rock goes, he goes and collects it, comes back and finds the head healed again, again and again and again to the day of judgment. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Subhanallah, who is this man? So they said to him, he is the one that memorized a verse from the Quran, then he neglected it. Memorized something from the Quran and forgotten about it. Allah blessed him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored him that he memorized something from the Quran and he threw it back to Allah. Did not take care of it. Did not revise it. Did not grab onto it. And he is the one that sleeps during the Salah al maktuba it's time to get up for the Salah, doesn't get up. Salat al-Fajr, he doesn't get up. To pray, he doesn't even get up. Dhuhr, doesn't get up. Asr, doesn't get up. It's Maghrib, he goes and sleep and doesn't care. Amen. Leaning on his back. Another man with a rock, crushing that rock on his head. Then the rock falls, he goes and gets it, comes back, finds his head, came back the way it was. Crushes it again continues like that again and again and again to the day of judgment. Who is he? He is the one that memorizes a verse from the Quran, then neglects it. And he is the one that sleeps during the prayers, forgets about it. Does not even bother to get up five minutes and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, through this journey, he saw a red river. Red river. Like blood, as the Prophet Muhammad says. In the middle of that river, in the middle of that red river that's like a blood, a man in the middle of it, swimming, trying to reach the shore. And each time this man tries to come near the shore, there is another man standing on the shore with rocks, throwing it at him. Casting it at him, letting him go back where he started from again. A red river like a blood and a man in the middle. Trying to swim so hard. Each time he comes near the shore, there's a man standing on the shore with rocks. Stoning him, casting him, letting him go back where he started swimming from. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's looking at that scene. 
Every time this man struggles, another man thrown at his face, cracking his face with that rock, striking him with that rock, injuring his head with that rock. He goes back, his face comes back again, and he strives again to come near the shore. And there is another man striking him with rocks, stoning him with rocks on his face, cracking his face, pushes him to go back and back. And he tries again, and then he pushes him to go back, cracking his face, letting his face bleed. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa is looking at that. Who is this man? And what's this man doing? So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said, Subhanallah, glory be to Allah azza wa jal. What's this? So they replied back to him and they said, this is the one that takes usually riba. Riba! Interest! Takes interest, sells interest, does not care Allah had forbidden it or not. He'll continue to strive and struggle to the day of judgment, stuck in the middle of red blood river, trying to every time to come near the shore. He's about to drown, comes near it, he gets struck with rocks and stones on his face. He gets pushed back again. Who is that? Akil riba the one that eats riba wal billah. Muslims don't even care. Riba or not, as long as the interest rate is low, as long as I have a house, as long as I don't move every year, what are you going to say to Allah Azza wa Jal? You strive by moving place every year, how are you going to survive? When he can't even come near the shore during that time, and that's only in the grave. Then in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said, I was taken to see a big pot with a very narrow head, massive pot. You could see inside it, but very narrow. At the deep bottom of that pot, blazing fire with naked men and women inside it, screaming and shouting, trying to escape through that narrow hole, but they can't. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, who are those people? So the reply comes back to him, that are the adulterer and the adulteress. Those who fornicate, those who sleep around illegally, don't even care if Allah is watching or not. As long as I fulfill my sexual desire. As long as I fulfill my sexual desire. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, I see them in a very, very deep pot with blazing fire at the bottom of it. Very narrow hole, screaming and shouting, trying to survive by coming through that narrow hole. But the fire takes him deep. Who are they? They are those who commit zina. Az-Zunat, Az-Zunat, Waz-Zawani, those who commit illegal sex and don't even care, sleep around with women, sleep around with men, fulfilling their sexual desire. Let us know that five minutes pleasure, if it's worth it to be punished in the hellfire. I ask you about Allah, is it worth it? Is that five minutes? That five minutes or even one hour pleasure, worth it to be punished in the hellfire? Worth it to be punished in the grave? What are you going to think of when you are punished because of this mercy or this sin that you had committed? What are you going to say to Allah? What are you going to reply to Allah? What are you thinking of? That brother and that sister that's committing the sin while you are punished in the grave and the hellfire, what's going through your mind? Was it worth it? Was it worth it that you disobeyed Allah and committed that sin? Wal'iyadu billah. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also says the day that he was taken on a night journey he saw people being punished. He saw people being punished in their grave to the day of judgment with scissors from the hellfire cutting off their lips and their tongues and every time their lips and their tongues are cut off 
Allah Azza wa Jal replaces them with another lip, another lip or another tongue and to be cut off again. For them to continue tasting the punishment to the day of judgment. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, who are these people? Who are these people? Their lips and their tongues are always getting cut off with scissors from the hellfire. And every time their lips and their tongues are cut off, Allah Azza wa Jal replaces them with another lip, another tongue to be cut off again, and again, and again, and again to the day of judgment. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, who are they? What did these people commit? So the reply comes back, Oh Muhammad, there are, there are those who give an advice from your nation. They call for which is good, but they never follow it. And prevent from which is bad, and they fall into it. We encourage people to do good, and yet we don't even do it. We tell people this is haram, and we are committing it. Wal'iyadu billah. Wal'iyadu billah. Their lips and tongues are getting cut with scissors from the hellfire to the day of judgment. You call for which is good and you don't even follow it. You prevent from which is bad and you don't even act upon it. They read the Quran and they don't even acknowledge it. Read the Quran and don't even act upon it. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, nasa bil birri wa tansawna anfusakum. You encourage people for which is good and you forget yourselves. And also, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, about a group of people who Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam saw being punished to the day of judgment. The Hanged by their feet. They are hanged by their feet with hooks in the hellfire. That they bleed and continue to bleed and bleed and bleed and bleed. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he says, Who are these people and what they are do? So the reply comes back to him, There are those who break their fast in a time they should not be breaking their fast. Eating during the month of Ramadan without an excuse. Breaking your fast during the month of Ramadan without an excuse. And Nabi says, I saw them being punished in their graves with claws or hooks in their feet and hanged upside down, bleeding and being tortured and punishment. Being tortured and punished. Who are they? And Nabi Sallallahu was asked, who, uh, Nabi Sallallahu asked, who are they? So they said, oh Muhammad, there are those who break their fast during a time they should not be breaking their fast. They break their fast during the month of Ramadan. They don't care if they fast or they don't fast. They eat, they don't eat. As long as they are suffice and content, they'll be hanged by their legs with hooks in their feet in the hellfire to the day of judgment. Also, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks about other things and sins that Allah will punish us for in the grave is not paying off your debt. Especially when you have the ability to. You owe someone a dollar or a thousand or a hundred thousand or whatever it is. And you have the ability to pay it off, but you delay it. You don't want why? You want to take advantage of that money in your hands. You want to invest that money. But that money does not belong to you. It belongs to someone else. Why don't you pay it off? Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you pay it off in the grave. Allah azza wa jal will make you pay it off in the grave. You'll be punished for it as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He tells one of the brothers in which one, his, one of his brothers died. In Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam, he says, Your brother will continue to be punished in the grave until you pay off his debt. Pay off the debt of your brother, he said to him, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he went around and paid off the debt of his brother and came back to the Messenger of Allah. And he said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, I paid off the debt of my brother, except there is one woman that claims that my brother owes her two dirham. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Pay it off. It's sadaqah. Be on the safe side. Your brother is getting punished because of debt that he owes. Two dirham or two dinar, pay it off. 
You owe someone money, give it back to them. Don't delay it. Wait, Allah, they want to invest it. And finally, my brothers and sisters, one of the punishments that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish in the grave is when the family weeps over their dead or deceased. It's not haram that you cry and weep over the dead. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, the dead will be punished because of the weeping and the crying of his family. Because of the weeping and the crying of the family. This is not the norm or the natural thing. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is referring to that when someone before his death, he tells his family, when I die, cry on me a lot. Make a scene. This is one of the things the Arabs used to do back then. They want to make a scene before they, they want their families to make a big scene over their death. So people say, MashaAllah, the one that died really has great value in the hearts of his people. But if people cry naturally, not because the deceased or the dead ask for it, Allah does not punish the deceased for it. But Allah Azza wa Jal will punish the one that asked for it before his death. When I die, make sure you make a big scene over my death. Cry and weep and let everyone that had died. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah will continue to punish him for this recommendation till the day of judgment. These different types of sins and actions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish the dead for in the grave. However, in general, Allah will punish for any sin. Allah will punish for any sin, for any evil doing. Regardless, and Allah will forgive to whoever he wants. Allah will punish and Allah will forgive. Allah ghafoor rahim, shadeed al-iqab. He is the most forgiving. And Allah azza wa also punishes severely. So there are punishments for other sins that we probably don't know of. However, Allah azza wa jal can forgive. So Allah will punish for any sin that someone commits. And Allah azza wa jal will also forgive for any sin that someone commits. Insha'Allah, I'll finish off, off. I'll, sh I'll finish off about the grave. What are the different actions that we can do to save ourselves from the punishment of the grave next week? And then we could start with the signs of the Day of Judgment. Now I ask Allah to make us from amongst those who listen and hear, act upon with the listen and hear. Subhanakallah, bihamdik, nashadu an la ilaha illa ant, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. نستغفرك ونتوب إليك